All right. What we got here is called the beefsteak polypore. This is a spot that I have found this mushroom. Uh, this is my third year in a row now. And last year, they, because we didn't have a whole lot of rain, they didn't get very big. So it was just like two little tiny nubs. But the interesting thing about this mushroom is they kind of resemble raw beef when you cut them open. I'm gonna see. It almost looks like it's a little past its prime, but maybe not. I'm just gonna cut it at the base here at first. It is a polypore mushroom, no gills underneath. And the, gill, the pores can be whitish like this, or they can be even pinker than this. But I'm going to take it home and I'm going to cut it open and show you just the unique texture and the unique look of this mushroom when you cut it open. Almost just, I mean, it almost feels like a, a slab of raw beef in my hand. And I can tell you, I've had them twice before. Actually, all, all three times I found it is right here, like I said. But this is actually my favorite mushroom, edibility-wise. Uh, people love the morels. I do too. People love chanterelles. I do too. But man, I love the taste of this mushroom. It's got a sour, almost kind of an acidic taste. But, yeah, I'll show you some more when I get home. Okay, so I put this mushroom in the fridge overnight. It's gotten really hard, but you can see the... It just kind of looks like blood, it looks like it's bleeding. I'm going to attempt to cut, cut it open, show you what it looks like on the inside. See how it really resembles raw beef or liver, a lot of people say. It's like a large liver. And the texture, it just kind of feels like a slab of raw meat. Really, really cool. So we're gonna, we've got some people over, we're gonna cook up some pieces, several pieces, and see how people like them. We'll show them to you after they're cooked. Well, here it is, cut up. Try to give you an up close look at that. Has that marbly look. Again, just like a cut piece of beef. I don't know if that lighting is the best. Maybe get it out here a little bit. Okay, so I am just pan frying these, or sauteing them, and some butter. So, like I said, they have a real natural sour, acidy taste. Don't need a whole lot of flavoring, but we'll put some salt and pepper on them. And we'll see how people like them. Just like steak is red when it's raw and it browns up as it cooks. The same thing with washing bowls. Here's how they look fully cooked. I've seasoned them a little bit. I've got to be honest, they don't uh, taste as tangy or acidy as the ones I found in the past. I don't know if it's because it's a, it was a little bit older. Maybe they start to lose their flavor when they get older. Or maybe I overcooked them a little bit, I'm not sure. There's still some red in there, so I don't think that's it, but still good. It kind of reminds me of a portobello. So this is round two. I saved a few to uh, share with a different friend. And they actually did end up being a little tangy from the first uh, round, the thicker ones. I guess the one that I tasted at first was just a thin piece from the edge. Uh, but somebody asked me if I had cooked them in balsamic vinegar because they kind of had that flavor to them. But I told them, no, nope, I didn't. That's just the natural flavor of the mushroom. So I'm not going to quite cook uh, 
this batch as long, uh, hoping that it'll maintain the flavor a little bit more. Uh, if you get a chance to try this motion, you definitely should. Thanks for watching.